Hello and welcome. In this video, we're going to take another look at our fundamentals demo. And specifically, we're going to take another look at the Git info that we looked at earlier. And we're going to get the information from the user. In a previous video, we saw how to do this interactively. In this video, we're going to see how to get it from the command line and then ultimately display the information in a nice table or in a nice format. Now, I've given you the format already. It's not all that interesting. It's just sort of a meta information or metadata. In other words, what's the field name followed with a colon. We'll be using this format for various pieces of information later on in other video series as well. So this pattern of metadata or field name colon space followed by the data itself is going to be pretty prevalent throughout several series. And in this particular case, what I want to do is I want to capture the information from the command line. In the earlier video, we saw how to capture it using a scanner in and then ultimately passing that information to a function. And we actually wrote a helper function called display info that accepts a lot of input arguments. And so the idea is that I want to capture the information from the command line this time, and I want to leverage our display info function that we used in the earlier video for the get info. Now, the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to acknowledge the fact that this is a lot of information that you would probably not pass by the command line unless you had some sort of automated way to go about doing this. And so this is going to be a little bit awkward and a little bit difficult this, for this one. And we're only going to take a look at one scenario in this video, and that is where we're not going to pass the metadata. In other words, I'm not going to pass the field names. I'm only going to pass the values. And so what we want to do is we want to recognize now how many arguments would need to be passed. And that's just simply handled by counting up the number of rows in our sample file. And so we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. 9, 10, 11. And as I said earlier, passing 11 arguments on the command line is probably a bit much. That would definitely be on the high side of what you would want to do without some really strong justification. Now, keep in mind that we also want to handle the switch that corresponds to the behavior that we want to see in our application. And so in this case, then what we'll want to do is add another branch to our LSIF. And the LSIF is going to be if our argument count dot length is equal to 12. Now, where did I get 12? Well, because I want to support the get info and 11 additional arguments. Again, I cannot emphasize enough. That there would have to be a very specific scenario that you would want to do this with. This would not be something that you would do typically. But once again, there's a point behind us doing it this way, because ultimately I want us to see how we would capture then this much information from the command line. So we have our arg square brackets zero equals ignore case. And then we check to see if it does match our get info. And if that's true, and there are in fact 12 arguments, then that means that we need to get this information from the command line arguments. Now, we're not going to be doing any validation here. And so right off the bat, I want to point out here that this get info does not validate the data. In other words, technically, we could pass an empty string or the first name or last name, and I'll actually show you how to do that. So we would ultimately want to validate this data if we were going to use this in some sort of production environment. And so what I'm about to show you is going to be absolutely terrible. It's not going to be the way that you're going to want to ultimately do this, but we will make a function call now to our fundamentals demo dot display info. And you can see here that NetBeans will help us by auto populating these fields. Well, that would be great if we had these variables. Well, we could, of course, create a list of variables, 11 variables. As a matter of fact, we could actually go through and we could just simply copy and paste from our display info function signature to get the variable names. Wouldn't be bad. However, in the spirit of doing this utterly and completely wrong, what I'm going to do is I'm simply going to pass the arguments themselves, starting with args square brackets one, args, and then I'm actually going to be even a bit lazier, and then I'm simply going to do args square bracket and then follow it up with a 
space. And imagine I'm probably going to get the count wrong the first time. Uh, again, I cannot emphasize enough that this is not likely the way that you would want to go about doing this. If anything, it's proving a couple of points here. Number one is that these are a lot of arguments to pass. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, and then ultimately I think we need one more. That is going to be the twelfth argument. Actually, let me make sure that we've got this right. Um, so we're going one through eleven. Now, to be honest with you, I've actually lost count. All right, so I think we're good. So we do one through 11 because we are dealing with zero-based indexing and the zeroth argument is technically the get info switch. And so we can go ahead and build this. And sure enough, we did actually get this right. And then what we would do here to be able to trigger this is once again, definitely not an appealing way of going about doing it, but everything would need to be in quotes, if they have spaces, and if they don't, you don't technically need the quotes. However, it's probably not a bad habit to just get into because that way you can easily identify each of the fields. And so once again, this is going to take us just a second to get set up to test. This would definitely be an example of something that you would want to consider testing using a batch file, because if you did need to repeatedly test this, this would take a lot of time. And so we'll go ahead and check. This is going to take us just a second here. And of course, it would probably help if your sample data was probably not as long as the one that I've provided. But in the spirit of keeping all of these demos the same, I'm simply just using that input file. And you should as well. And then our last field then is our memory. And all I'm doing here is just copying and pasting just to try to speed this up. Of course, you could just type it out. Now, assuming that we haven't made any mistakes, you'll see that I have a total of 12 arguments and I am correctly passing each one of those arguments correctly. In other words, my first name is Gregory, last name Myers, and so on. And I don't see immediately any mistakes. Perhaps some will come up later on when you watch the video, but I think everything is correct. So basically at this point, what we're doing is we are utilizing our display info function for two different helper functions, or rather using it as a helper function in two different scenarios. One is where we collect the information interactively using a scanner. And the second one is where we pull the information directly from the command line. And once again, I can't emphasize enough that this would probably not be the way that you would want to do it. You really would want to validate each one of the fields. And to appreciate what I'm talking about, what you can do is you can actually hit the up arrow and we can go all the way back to the beginning of the line here. And you'll notice that I can actually remove Gregory and just put double quotes. And because of the way we've handled this, Technically, this would not work, okay? And so you've got to think about validation of your data as well. So in other words, in this case, if we put a space here, it will. But if you notice, my first name is now blank. So you just want to be careful with using this approach. You would want to correctly validate all of the fields. So this was just meant to be for demonstration purposes, but it does lead us to one additional example. And so in this case, our display info accepted all of the arguments individually. Well, what if you knew that you were going to be able to pass an array? In other words, what if we change our display info function signature ever so slightly to match our main. And what I mean by that is we're going to have a public static void display info. And then what we're going to do is we're going to have the exact same function signature as our strings. And we're just going to simply pass strings arg rather. And we're just simply going to pass the entire argument array. 
And at that point, then we could have yet another overload with another function signature. And then what you would do there then is you would simply copy your function signature, or rather the passing of the arguments to your function. And then in your display info here, you could just simply make a call to EE333 fundamentals demo display info. And instead of parameterizing or specifying each one of the variables, we could just pass, once again, them as separate arguments. The distinct advantage with doing it this way is you can push your validation here. So handle the validation inside this overload. Now, don't worry if that doesn't mean anything to you right now. We'll get plenty of opportunity to do this later on. The main thing to note here is that you can have multiple functions with the same function name and just simply have them differentiated by their input arguments. So the last thing that we want to do real quick, just to get our warnings to go away, as, many, as much as we can, we're simply going to have then our comment block and it's at least not warning us about our args. So once again, hopefully this video was helpful, made sense to you. If you have any questions, comments, or concerns, don't hesitate to reach out to me and thank you for watching.